All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, hopefully, is that can you hear me okay? You're good. Great. All right. Well, thanks for joining uh, joining today. We're really excited to talk about the most useful tool for career navigation, which is LinkedIn. Hopefully, all of you in your roles know that. But what we wanted to do today is to share seven advanced hacks that you may not be as familiar with in making the most of this tool for um, the students, alumni, whoever it is that you work with. And uh, really, really excited to be in front of this crowd. We love NACE. We've um, long time been uh, a part of this organization in and around it. And you'll get a little bit more of a sense of who we are um, as I go and why that's true. All right, so hopefully you can see my screen okay, yes. Just a few notes. Um, this will be a combination of presentation and live demo. You'll get the recording as well as this presentation um, afterwards. Pay close attention and make the most of this hour that we have together. And also, I really encourage you to stick around because throughout we're going to be giving and pointing to some very special um, content and discounts that we've made available for NACE members. So um, don't tell the other schools who are not here because they might be upset about this, given what they uh, usually we usually charge them. But we're really excited to um, be able to make some things available to you all in terms of uh, the book and some of the content that we, we've created in an online course. So stay tuned for that. Um, it seems like the chat is disabled. So any questions that you have as we, we go, please put them in the q and I'll do my best to address them as we go. Um, but we had a little time mix up, so I'm running this solo. My partner is on another webinar with another school. So um, bear with me here as I, uh, as I do this. Okay, so excited to have you here. I see that our participant list is getting up to 400. Let us jump in. So a little bit about, uh, about me and my partner, uh, Jeremy. Um, here you can see the school that uh, I proudly am representing as my alma mater. Um, Jeremy is a UMish guy. Um, and <clears throat> what we have in common is that we love LinkedIn. We are true LinkedIn fanboys, so much so that we had this, uh, this career that includes many of these brands that we actually share in common places we worked uh, either together or separately. But you can see right in the middle there, that includes LinkedIn. We love LinkedIn so much that we actually work there. We were two of the people who started the student and college team at LinkedIn several years ago. And so we're bringing to you today a perspective of what it's like um, inside the belly of the beast. A little bit of insights on how the algorithm works as well as um, as well as how recruiters search because we've been recruiters and hiring managers. We've also both worked inside career centers ourselves. Um, and, and so we, uh, we sort of run the gamut here of um, <clears throat> experiences that we're bringing to this, but most notably, we love LinkedIn. We've seen its value over time, uh, both for ourselves and the now tens of thousands of job seekers that we've trained, mostly students um, who've seen the results. And we, we also uh, offer an online course, which has had um, nearly 20,000 participants at this point. We offer a money back guarantee on that course and only one person has ever uh, asked for their money back. So we know it works, we hear the testimonials all the time. And we're also really, uh, really lucky to have uh, published a book recently. So today is sort of a, a bit of our book launch event with uh, the audience that we thought might be most interested, <laughs> which is uh, a book called Linked with uh, the Hachette Group that published this back in May. And if you, just bookmark, save, copy, paste this, uh, this link. This is the key thing you're going to need for um, engaging with us in the future. Book.linkedinguys.com slash discount. Um, we're really grateful that this book has be, become a bestseller out of the gates. Um, it's, you know, we've, we've heard so many positive things. And what we wanted to do was capture our, our knowledge from having worked at LinkedIn with students, with colleges, and then everything we've learned since in coaching these, these audiences and make this more available to the masses. So today's webinar is part of that, but the book is really the way that we were excited to do that. <clears throat> it, it walks through a five-step process to finding, getting found for, and getting hired for your dream job. And, uh, and it, LinkedIn is absolutely the through line, but it, you know, it covers a lot of um, more general topics in terms of how you tell your story. What is the value of building both a broad and a strategic network? 
um, how do you think about preparing for your interviews and, uh, and sort of trying to curate those resources across the web as well. So that's what the book is all about. If you go to this link above, you'll see we're making a bulk discount um, available to, to, uh, to NACE members. And so the way this works is if you purchase more than 25 um, copies, you can start to get uh, really good discounts on, on the book itself. We've had a lot of career centers wanting to, to have these on hand for both students and alumni, as well as for their staff. We really strongly believe that every, every person who works in career services should have a copy of this on their desk, in their bookshelf. And, um, and we're, that's really the audience we wrote it for. So we're really excited to be in front of you today and be doing sort of a train the trainer type of, uh, type of, um, of training. Um, <clears throat> also, the book has been super well received on the review front. So we're really proud of the fact that people find this content valuable. We wanted to demystify a lot of what's out there about LinkedIn, right? What is it? Is it social media? Is it a job board? Is it your Rolodex? It's so many different things. But not all of those things matter equally when it comes to getting found for, getting vetted, getting in and getting hired for your dream job. And so what we try to do is cut through that clutter and distill down what really matters most. That's what's in the book. <clears throat> okay. And also, um, let, me, let me just take a, a, <clears throat> a moment here and um, play for you the little video that uh, our publisher put together. <laughs> with a little, uh, a little video. Um, folks have said maybe the, the book link is, uh, is not working. So I just wanna make sure that, uh, that you have that. Um, I'll go back one slide here. Um, Book.linkedinguys.com slash discount. And I actually see somebody chatting in to host some panelists. So it looks like that's available if you wanna reach us directly. <clears throat> yes, thank you, Natalia. All right, all right. So let's uh, let's keep going here and um, jump into our content for today. Um, oh, and uh, one other thing that I just want to mention is we want to celebrate. Yes, the book launch, but also you. The work that y'all do is so important. You are literally shaping um, lives um, and futures, and we've been in your shoes uh, and know how hard that job is, how much love and care you put into it. And really, again, like I said, the book is meant to help you um, scale and add to your expertise. Um, and so we absolutely love, uh, love being here and we love um, career services. Now, I know there's other folks in here, maybe some employers, some graduate um, <clears throat> schools, some development and advancement people. Um, uh, all of this will be relevant, um, but yes, I am taking a, a bit of a, a focus here on, um, on career services. Okay, we've been lucky enough to work with a ton of top schools all around the world. This is just a smattering of some of those schools. Um, and, um, you know, really the content in the book has, has been born of this experience working with all of these top schools, um, undergrads, even prospective high school students, um, grad students, MBAs, PhDs, med schools, um, so many more. Um, basically, if you can think of a student or alumni base, um, we've worked with them. Um, but who cares about all of them today? It's all about, uh, all about all about NACE. All right. The last thing I want to make you aware of on the book and the link that I gave you above is that you can get up to a 51% discount on our book. Um, but also, <clears throat> we just decided this morning that we were actually going to make available to you our online course. This is five-star rated. Again, tens of thousands of students have taken this. We keep it updated every single um, uh, year. We've, we just went through a huge update of it this summer, 
And so we sell this to schools for $9.99 for unlimited seats for the year. We've decided if you make a bulk purchase of 25 copies or more of the book, which is at this link, just about, I think, $300 or so, we will give you access to this course for the rest of the school year. Um, and you can send this out to students, alumni, your staff, whoever you'd like. Um, so make sure you take advantage of this. Uh, and again, all this information is at the link that I shared. All right. So really excited to be able to um, offer you all that. Again, we don't, we have full-time jobs. We're not doing this for the money. We're doing this to try to scale and spread our knowledge to people like you and all of the people that you serve. All right. <clears throat> again, book.linkedinguys.com slash discount. And you will get this in the follow-up email too from NACE. Um, these methods work, okay? They will, they will lead to new inbounds from recruiters, job offers ultimately, new connection requests. And, um, and again, the proof of that is that we've worked with hundreds of schools who come back to us every single year for the past five, six years. And these job seekers we work with have told us it works and never uh, asked for their money back with the course, which many, many job seekers are buying for $99 per seat. Um, so our friend Manny here, former um, president of NACE, uh, uh, was kind enough to, uh, to, to take a look at the book and blurb it. He's, uh, I think, right on the front cover. <laughs> uh, so um, let's jump into why this is the case. Why is it the case that these, these um, strategies I'm going to just touch on a little bit today and what we talk about in the book lead to such, um, such high return? And it's because, as many of you know, LinkedIn is really the key to the modern job search, right? We know two-thirds of recruiter, recruiters only use LinkedIn to find and vet candidates, <clears throat> and 97% of them use it to do so. Also, they are looking at LinkedIn profiles no matter how candidates apply, right? Whether it's through your career center, whether it's through a job board, whether it's through their company website, they nearly double their chances of getting a callback with a comprehensive LinkedIn profile. Why is this? Well, not only is LinkedIn synonymous with the job market now, right? Where all the recruiters live, where all the supply, the talent is, uh, Right? It is also because the LinkedIn profile does so much more than the static resume right? or even the cover letter. It is a resume plus some narrative and some storytelling. Resume plus show not just tell. Resume plus some social validation and proof. Resume plus um, <clears throat> some visual elements. right? Resume plus aspiration, not just mere reflection of what you've done. So it's um, very, very important in building a personal brand nowadays, and it's, and it's just there is no competitor to it in making sure you're well positioned for that next thing you want to have, you, you want to be found for, right? Whether it's an internship, a full-time job, two jobs down the road. Um, what we tell students, especially undergrads, is laying these seeds now, building your professional brand, building your network before you need it is going to pay off with, um, you know, huge flowering trees down the road. And so there's, it's really never too early to do this. In fact, when we worked at LinkedIn, LinkedIn changed its terms of service to allow high school students on LinkedIn. Um, and so it's really the, become the key to the modern job search, not just because it's where all the hirers are, but because they are looking for something very specific that they can only get from LinkedIn in terms of resume plus. So before I jump into our seven advanced hacks for today, I just wanna go over some of the basics. And these are the things that we really focus on in the book and in our online course and custom webinars. And one of the basic principles is to think about how you optimize your LinkedIn presence and network for recruiters, right? Recruiters are using a $10,000 special edition of LinkedIn that they pay to access so they can really find those needles in the haystack, right? They're filling their funnel all day long, especially right now, while while job seekers have a little bit more of the power than they traditionally did, hopefully that moment will last and we won't enter a real recession, but they're going through a very specific process using that flagship version of LinkedIn that they pay $10,000 a year to access. And here's our take on what the, the hiring process looks like, right? They want focused candidates as they're filling that top of the funnel, candidates who look exactly like the job they're trying to hire for, right? They're busy, they're searching on title and location. Second, they want serious candidates only, people who have engaged with the company, who know people at it, people who have raised their hand to say, I'm actually on the job market. 
Third, they want referrals from current employees. Referrals are the best source of talent, right? <clears throat> they stay the longest, they're most likely to get hired and they perform the best. Every company knows this, every nonprofit and government agency knows this. It's why they give out referral bonuses. So a key thing for job seekers, especially students that may not realize it, is you should not be applying to jobs cold. You should always find somebody on the inside. And if you haven't been able to build that network before you need it on the inside, you can always do so right after you've applied in that first five days when we know that interviews are actually happening and have somebody on the inside flag your application. Referrals are a very special class of candidate. Fourth, recruiters select based on connections and knowledge, right? You crush the interview with your knowledge and to seal the deal, but recruiters aren't just, aren't just um, consciously selecting people based on connections. The LinkedIn algorithm is actually surfacing people based on connections. LinkedIn optimization is not a pure meritocracy where you can just fill it full of keywords. You also have to be cognizant of the network that you're building because it will literally order the search results in recruiter by how closely you are connected to the person searching. And so that has implications for how we build our network. And then lastly, recruiters, hiring managers do a background check or a back channel where they reach out to shared connections to see, are you really who you say you are? So unsurprisingly, you can hack each of these steps using LinkedIn. This is kind of the framework for our book. If recruiters are looking for focused candidates, you've got to get focused. You've got to look exactly like that duck that they're trying to hire, um, walk, talk, and, uh, and, you know, and, and really be exactly that candidate they're looking to hire, even if you haven't necessarily done that job yourself, <clears throat> but it's more aspirational in nature. Secondly, you've got to show you're engaged so you can pass through those filters that recruiters use in their product for, are you on the job market? Do you know people at the firm? Are you following their company, et cetera? Third, if they're looking for referrals, you've got to find a lead and warm them up as a referral. This is so important that job seekers and students should be spending you know, disproportionate amount of their time actually finding people whose career paths they can learn from and then connecting into so they're, they're, they have access to those people as potential referrals in the future and or even mentors in the short term um, so that that's there when they need it. Because again, referrals make sure that you get in the back door and get your stuff actually looked at as opposed to that cold stack of resumes in the front door that never actually gets to a human. Fourth, you've got to build your network and your knowledge so you can crush the interview. You've got to build your network in two ways. Broadly, so depth is a con uh, breadth is a concept we talk a lot about in the book um, to get that network effect going for you, but then also selectively and strategically with people like recruiters, with people like targeted alumni who can help you along your way. And then lastly, why should recruiters be the only ones that can do a background check? You can actually do your own so you know what you're getting into. 72% of people who switched jobs during the great resignation um, have turned out to actually regret it, right? So the reason for that is because they haven't done their due diligence. And guess what? The grass is not always greener. All right. So this is sort of a five-step framework that we walk through in the book. And a key concept in the sort of basics category is to remember when you are trying to optimize your profile, trying to focus it, you cut through the clutter by doing so for a specific job. A lot of times we work with students, and I'm sure you do too, who say, oh, I need to get all these things on my LinkedIn profile. I, you know, I'm going to just throw all the spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks. I'll let them connect the dots of everything that I've done or studied or been interested in, rather than saying, no, this is my proactive story that I want to tell. This is the job or internship that I want to be found and considered for, and making sure everything lines up that way, right? So you've got to first know what you're actually targeting. And I know that's really hard, long work that many of you are engaged in every day, right? The manifestation, the place where that should be manif manifest is on the LinkedIn profile in a way that tells a coherent story about the thing you want to do next. So there's no such thing as a perfect profile, just a profile, perfect profile for a specific job. The sooner that job seekers can get to, what is that thing I might want to try? Even if it's just trying next, um, they will get better results on LinkedIn both with the recruiter and with the algorithm. And so chapter four is all about how do we focus our profile? And as I just alluded to, it's about optimizing it for two audiences, the man or the human recruiter and the machine, the algorithm. For the human recruiter, two things that matter most are profile photo, 21 times more views with a great profile photo, right? This might seem like basic, but it's really important. What do I mean by a great profile photo? You alone, facing forward, smiling, Warm, authentic, Duchenne smile. You can Google that. 
not this overly polished thing, right? Because this is your little icon that travels with you throughout the property. And it's small. You want to radiate warmth. We're trained as babies to um, respond to warm, smiling faces. Also, non-noisy background. Can't remember if I didn't say, if I said that. Closely cropped. Last thing is think about what you're communicating by your dress, right? Yes, you can always err on the side of formality, but what you really want to look like is you're already a member of that tribe that you want to be in, that industry, that company. My friend Tony up here, he looks great for Silicon Valley, but not so much for right, banking in New York. So best way to know that is to view a lot of profiles. Second thing that matters to the human recruiter is that headline, that area right below your name where you can do whatever you want, even though LinkedIn will push you to make that your most recent experience. And this is the most important real estate on LinkedIn, actually to the algorithm as well, because it's the most character limited. It's also the place we know recruiters skim to get a quick sense of who you are in their search results. So this has to be targeted. It has to be aspirational. It has to contain specific keywords. Speaking of keywords, what matters most to the machine, the algorithm are two things. Keywords first, right? 40 times more likely to get profile views with the right keywords in the right places. I'll talk more about that in a second. But then also, as I said, connections, right? This is not just about keyword stuffing. It's also about making sure you have the right connections to rise up in these search results. Because just like Google, if you don't show up on the first page or two of search results, you kind of don't exist for these jobs, all right? So we talk a lot about how to optimize for these two audiences. When it comes to keywords, these are the sections that matter most in priority order. Headline, again, because it's the most character limited, doubly important because it also matters most to the recruiter and to the algorithm, as I'm saying here. Secondly, the summary or about section, the format we love in this section, and I still call it a summary because I think of it as a professional summary, is one to three sentences that connect the dots of what you've done and studied professionally so that you're not expecting the person on the other side to connect those, right? Connect the dots proactively, tell a bit of a story, and then three bullets of your greatest hits of your resume. Accomplishments, not just responsibilities. They can be academic in nature if that's all you've done, right? Three bullets, bullets are totally fine here. And then the most important part is a paragraph or two chock full of keywords. You're gonna say specialties in, expertise in, or for the students you work with, coursework in, because right, many of them get that benefit of saying that. And so that's where you're gonna um, sort of uh, fill it up with keywords that show up in the target job descriptions that are most interesting to the students or um, alumni that you're working with. Lastly, experience or skills. Skills are indexed by the LinkedIn algorithm. Um, endorsements, by the way, are not. Experience is important because LinkedIn's algorithm is not super sophisticated. It's going to say, if you've been a brand marketing manager, you might be a good fit for a future brand marketing manager job. But also important is volunteer experience. This is a section that I actually advocated be created on the profile when I worked there. And we talked to recruiters, over half of them said they value volunteer experience on par with paid full-time work experience. So for many of your students who want to be a social media marketing manager, but haven't done that yet, could they do it as a class project? Could they go do that one hour a month for a local nonprofit? Okay. So these are the sections that matter most when it comes to keywords. Here's a bonus hack that I'm sure many of you know about jobscan.co. Jobscan.co helps, helps job seekers get a little bit more scientific about where do I need to beef up keywords? Just paste in your resume or your profile on one side and a target JD on the other side. And it'll tell you, here's what you need to do to get past a robot to a human. All right. Now let's jump into our seven hacks for today. And I'm going to um, start, uh, start engaging you a little bit more with polls. I see some of the questions coming in in the chat. Again, really hard for me to monitor solo, but I'll do my best. Um, keep them coming in. And we'll also get a record of this on the back end. Um, all right. So <clears throat> first things first here, let's start with poll number one, which is a student that we coached, he really wanted to become a criminal forensic scientist. Any guesses as to why? Thank you for your participation. Wow. Look at these votes. Okay. I'm going to end it in three, two, one. Thank you. 500 people participated in that. 91% of our audience said, yeah, he saw it on TV. You all know students well, don't you? Because indeed, he saw it on CSI, right? Now, we all know that's how students form per opinions and perceptions similarly with their peers, right? But is that the best way to 
really get decide on a career path? Uh, of course not, right? So hack number one is something called Career Explorer. And then I also want to use this as an opportunity to point out the LinkedIn alumni tool. I'm sure many of you know this. A few years ago when we helped create this tool, um, while we worked at LinkedIn, it was, it was not known. We would go around campuses and people would say, hey, what is this thing? So while Career Explorer is a really great skill-based way to get a sense of what you might actually be good at um, by looking at where there's skill overlap between different jobs or maybe things that you're studying and what jobs they're the most relevant for, um, I want to make sure that we don't underestimate or forget about the power of a shared, of shared affiliation. Using that alumni tool to reach out to people who have been in these jobs, who've actually also been on the campuses we've been on to say, hey, what does it mean to actually be a product manager at Microsoft, right? Find people who have done that, who are willing to connect with you because of your shared affiliation and learn directly from the horse's mouth on what it, what it really means to be in those kinds of jobs so you can then figure out if that's what you want to focus your search and accordingly your profile on. There's nothing like making a personal connection as efficient and, and, and helpful as LinkedIn is. It's really most efficient when it comes to facilitating those connections and greasing those wheels so you can learn directly from people who are in those jobs. So I want to take that opportunity to plug the alumni tool, my favorite hidden gem on LinkedIn, not just because I helped build it. You can obviously find those by searching for your own school on LinkedIn in the top box. All right, so with that, let me just quickly point out the LinkedIn, um, the LinkedIn uh, economic, uh, sorry, uh, Career Explorer, which is available at uh, this link. It's, um, I'll just put this in the chat here. Um, it's, a, it's a LinkedIn sort of Skunk Works uh, project right now on GitHub. But what's really interesting is, actually, let me show you uh, a workflow where you go from LinkedIn. Let's say we search for uh, your school. <clears throat> Cal State Fresno, we go to this page, and this is just a quick recap for people who don't know of how to get into the alumni tool. And if we click that alumni tab at the top, we can see a lead list of where they work, where they live, what they do, what they study, what they're skilled at, and how they're connected. Let's take, for example, one of these skills. Uh, let, well, actually, let's go back and filter this down. I want, to, I want you to know how quick it is to, and easy it is to filter here if you haven't played around with this. Let's say that we know we want to live in San Diego. We can click that horizontal bar. We're down to just 2,000 alumni from the tens of thousands that we originally had. We can see where they work, et cetera. Let's say we're really interested in Qualcomm, a big company in San Diego. Now we've got 10 alumni with just two quick clicks, and we can see who they are. We can learn from their career path. This is the best tool for career exploration for students, especially undergrads. That's why we created it. But then when you toggle over here, you can see the skills that they have, right? A good blueprint for what you might need to beef up on if you want to be uh, a candidate at Qualcomm in San Diego. And we can see things like C++, right? So then we can take that back into this career explorer. And <clears throat> it's just going to walk us through a little demo of how this thing works. But we can see skill overlap with certain kinds of jobs. Maybe they've been a food server in the past, and they want to see, hey, how can I use that to position myself for future things? Um, <clears throat> but then also skills like C++, right? And get into what percentage match are they for specific jobs? So check out that, um, check out both the Alumni Tool and Career Explorer and walk your students through that as a way to take a skill-based approach and reaching out to the, the people who've actually been in those jobs to the job search, right? What am I good at? What do I? What am I working on beefing up? And what jobs are those most relevant for? And the skill-based approach is a really important thing right now in this weird economic time we're in. We are finding many recruiters are less industry-specific and more skill-specific, right? So how can your students tell a story about, yeah, I've been um, interested in or working in the retail sector, but what the skills I've developed there are transferable, right? And I really think what I, um, you know, I really think they're applicable for this social media marketing job in the tech sector, for example. It's just something different, but they've got to make that crosswalk and that argument themselves. And those are tools that can help them do that. All right. Hack number two is all about finding anyone. And I just have to say, and this is chapter six of the book, I love this element of LinkedIn so much because for me, and in the book, I call it the great opportunity democratizer. The idea being anybody can create 
opportunity now and get in the door because we know how important that is. I mentioned the stats on referrals earlier. Anybody can do that by virtue of the network that they create um, on LinkedIn. And yes, it takes some hustle and some scrap and some focusing, but when they can do that, you have infinite doors available to you, right? The um, opportunities are no longer the rarefied air, the sole bastion of you know the old, let's be honest, often old white men circles. Anybody can puncture these circles with their networking prowess, right? And and so for a lot of these, a lot of our students, you know, this seems overwhelming. Maybe they're introverts. You you can do this much more efficiently on LinkedIn. And it plays nicely for uh, for those introverts as well. You can create your own opportunity by creating the right kind of network. And so here's our second poll. If we think about who the hardest person is to track down in the modern job search, what do you all think? All right, we are up to 300. Three, two, one. Look at that, solidly 75% of you said the right answer, which is the hiring manager. All right, clearly I needed to make this poll these poll questions harder. Um, the hiring manager is the hardest person to track down and the most important person because they feel the most pain to fill the open roles, right? Any of us who've had hiring, who, who've been hiring for roles, we can empathize. The recruiter is trying to fill the funnel and pass these things on to the hiring manager. They're looking for you know, some uh, quick ways to, to, to just basically say, yes, this person is a potential candidate, but the hiring manager is the one who really needs to vet, really need, really has the pain point and really the person that we've got to ultimately get to or get close to. Now, this is an amazing statistic. Only 7% of applicants are referrals, right, from current employees, but 40% of who actually gets hired Okay, so like I said, referrals are a very special class of, of candidate and your students, your job seekers should never be applying to a job cold. What's, what's critical is that they can find not just the hiring managers, but potentially those referrals. And often we don't even know which is which, right? So making these targeted connections is the name of the game. And the best tool for that is advanced people search on LinkedIn, okay? And I'll show you this real, real quickly in a minute. <clears throat> This is going to allow us to get even more specific and also include some additional filters that aren't possible in the alumni tool, which is searching just on specific school, right? And so this is the, the best way to find not just hiring managers, but also potential referrals. Oftentimes when we do find those people, students think, oh, I've got to um, craft the perfect email. I've got to maybe harangue them on uh, you know, uh, hunter.io, which is another hack that that we love to find their work email address. But something we found effective is what we call in chapter eight, who viewed my profile roulette? Who viewed my profile on LinkedIn is the most viral, it's the most popular part of LinkedIn, gets the most clicks because it plays to our human instincts around vanity and voyeurism. And so often what happens is when you view somebody's profile, what it happens, they view you back. And so we found often to just lubricate a connection, it doesn't necessarily take an email, or a connection request with a personalized note to uh, to somebody, it can it can be as simple as viewing their profile, and then you're off and running with your connection request with a personalized note that says, "Hey, I noticed that we viewed each other's profile. Would you like to chat for 20 minutes next week? Next week always being better than this week." Okay, so that's a strategy that one of our students gave us that actually works pretty well. Um, and again, Hunter.io can help you find the work email address of anybody once you're con convinced that's the right person. But let's talk for a second about how to find these people on LinkedIn. And this is as simple as hitting enter in the search box and bringing up all these filters, hitting the people filter. Well, 858 million members is not all that useful to us. So we want to start to filter that down. And with advanced people search, we can get really specific really quickly. Only show me the people who work at Amazon or Microsoft went to uh, my alma mater, right? And if we scroll down here to get really proximate to the hiring manager or somebody who knows them who can refer us in, we can search for terms in the title section that guarantee we're looking at the right team. So if we show those results, I've got 104 people who went to UVA 
who work in product management at uh, Amazon or Microsoft, right? And here they are. The great part about LinkedIn is not just can we can connect with, with them, but we can see shared connections. And by the way, please tell your students, if you don't already, when they are asking, when you're asking for an introduction from a shared connection, draft that introduction for them, draft that email. Don't just say, hey, can you intro me, okay? But this social layer on top of the, 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 world, uh, the, the world of work is really, really helpful in what separates LinkedIn in many ways, okay? So there's our lead list of people who could potentially be hiring managers and or referrals. And yes, advanced people search is the one feature on LinkedIn that you might hit a paywall with if you're doing lots of those, hundreds of those a month. I would recommend that career center um, folks, not only do you all need a copy of the book, but you can also have, um, you also could uh, get value out of LinkedIn premium so you don't hit that paywall, but your students, your job seekers do not need LinkedIn premium. If they're hitting that paywall in a heavy sort of search and uh, exploration mode, um, they can always try LinkedIn premium for free, for free for 30 days. And by the way, it resets the next month. So, um, it's, uh, it's often not that valuable. It's not like it rises them up in the search results. All right, so check out LinkedIn Advanced People Search, hunter.io to find and connect with anyone. And don't forget about who viewed my profile roulette. All right, next pop quiz. How do recruiters know you actually have a desired skill they say they want for a job? All right, five, four, three, two, one. We're up to over 400 respondents. A little bit more split on this one. We've got endorsements, assessment, and recommendation. And about half folks, half of the folks said you've got a recommendation. Now, here's what I will say. <clears throat> Recommendations are very helpful as a source of validation when they do land on your profile, right? But they're not indexed by the search algorithm. Anyone can recommend you. And we do recommend that you try to get one recommend, uh, recommendation per job or per academic experience you've been in. Doesn't really matter who that's from. So while that is true, I will caveat by saying that, um, the feature that we wanna point out here is actually LinkedIn skill assessments, which is a, a fairly new feature on LinkedIn that LinkedIn says will increase your chances of getting hired by 20% when you can demonstrate this on your profile. And um, just right now, so we can rule out choice A here, endorsements are a very weak signal. No recruiters um, pay real close attention to that. And the index, uh, the algorithm does not index based on endorsements, right? Your mother can endorse you for your PowerPoint skills. It's a weak signal. However, assess assessments, skill assessments, hack number three here, is an attempt that LinkedIn has made to try to show, not just tell, that you have a specific skill. And so if you go down right to your profile, generally speaking, this will be on the bottom of your profile, <clears throat> you'll be able to add uh, skills, right? So you wanna make sure that you have the key skills on here that, you, that are showing up in the job descriptions or internship descriptions that you're most interested in. You can have up to 50, you can feature three. You wanna make sure that you have at least those that show up on those job descriptions. But now you can actually demonstrate those skills with <clears throat> um, uh, this. This is actually a brand new feature where you can actually uh, show that you have those with a quick video. We'll get to that in a minute. But um, going back down to our skills section, when you uh, actually have, uh, have a specific skill, now you can take an assessment that shows you have that once you add it to your profile with a quick 30 uh, sorry, 15 question multiple choice test to show that you actually have those skills, right? And these are very, <clears throat> these are very specific. Um, there's some broad ones on here uh, and it'll just put a badge on your LinkedIn profile. It doesn't show that you don't have a skill if you fail the test, right? And it's going to block you off from retaking it for a certain number of days. But it's a nice thing to do simply because um you are showing that you have something. And the advice we try to give to students is focus it, do this, do this if you can demonstrate that you have a skill that is truly market differentiating, okay? Now, maybe um, at, for entry-level jobs, you know, Microsoft Office is something you want to show. But generally speaking, I think of these as, you know, graphic design, programming, 
um, maybe fluency with cer certain social media tools or advertising, those kinds of things um, are truly market differentiating. I think you might even send the wrong signal if you show on your profile that you have a skill in Microsoft Office by omission, you are saying, well, I don't have some of these other skills. So use it carefully, but it is something that's available and something that's indexed by the search algorithm. All right, next poll. Oh, oh, actually, let me just take a minute here and recap a few of the things I've said that don't matter on LinkedIn. And there's often a lot of confusion about this. We have a whole chapter in the book that's all about advanced hacks where we try to dispel some of these myths. Status updates don't matter. It's not Twitter. This doesn't get you found or get you considered. Endorsements we talked about. LinkedIn premium we also talked about. What does by contrast matter is not status updates, but posting long form articles. Now this is a lot of work for students, but if they take the time to formulate an original thought, they can showcase this right on their profile. It's attached to their profile. Everybody who views it can see it. And this is a really great way to show, hey, not only do I have an original thought, but I know something about this topic. Maybe it's as simple as something they read or they're responding to a lecture you know, in class. But um, especially, in, and even for those students who might be further along in their career or alumni that you work with, if they're trying to make a pivot, this is a helpful way to say, hey, I know something about this. I'm following what's happening in this industry. And it's great not only because for personal branding because it's attached to your profile, it's also really helpful because LinkedIn has built-in distribution, right? It's going through the network. It can turn viral. I have a post on 10 tips for students and new grads on LinkedIn that has over a million views, right? But how many times do we try to put things out on other platforms like Medium and it's just crickets, right? LinkedIn is the place you want to do this. That actually can be valuable in building your, your personal brand, whereas other types of updates aren't. Skills and skills assessments we talked about. And then also make sure students engage with um, messages they get from recruiters when they start to practice a lot of the strategies that are in my book, because LinkedIn will um, sometimes even uh, say that they are taking steps to suppress information about them to recruiters if they're not actually responding to those emails. So even if it's just say, hey, no, thanks, not interested, um, they must do that. The thing that I recommend they do if, if it's not the right fit or they're being reached out to for things that aren't interesting, first, that tells me there's a profile optimization problem, right? You're focusing it not on what you want to be found or considered for. But secondly, you've got a, a messaging sort of um, forum with that recruiter. Don't just say, hey, not interested. Say, I would love for you to think about me when you have an opening in this other area that I'm interested in. Okay. All right. Poll number four. Without checking or cheating, at least as of last year, which one of these companies grew its hiring the most? All right, three, two, one, truly split decision here. But actually most people said, or more people than the other choices said Rivian. And indeed that's true. So really hot electric car, uh, car actually truck company, right? And the reason that I want to point this out is because LinkedIn has something called the economic graph, which is another skunk works project that most folks don't know about. But what they've tried to do, when I went to go work at LinkedIn, I remember the head of product said to me, the most important thing that LinkedIn has is its data set, right? So LinkedIn's economic graph has data on all of its 850 million members. What kinds of jobs are they looking for? What are recruiters hiring for? What's the flow of talent look like between these different jobs or industries? And they produce all these really cool reports on things like gender equity, um, how to get into green jobs and specific types of work. What does the future of work look like? Okay. So you can have a field day playing, uh, playing around with this. They also generate um, data on the most in-demand um, companies to work for and even in specific geographies or industries, which types of functions are growing the most. So really helpful data for students as they try to focus. All right, so check out LinkedIn's economic graph project, taking all this universe of 850 million members and making it making some sense of it for job seekers. Especially helpful in that exploratory phase that we know many of our students are at. All right, next poll. What percentage of, oh, whoops. This got messed up with what I uh, sent over to Nice. Sorry. Let's, oh, actually, this is not an actual pop quiz. You don't need to put this in. Don't worry about it. Remote jobs that were available, 
poll in the US in the past week. This was a fake poll because it's my way of, of showing you the next hack, which is some new job search tools, new-ish. And so uh, the first one is making sure that we are setting up custom job alerts and filtering those on the past week because we know those are the jobs that are most available right now, right? When interviews are being scheduled, the first 72 to 96 hours, uh, right? We're setting up these job alerts. We're actually showing we're engaged. And we can do that with criteria like only show me the remote jobs. We can also hand raise to recruiters that we've set up job alerts for their specific company. This is in settings, and this is like shooting your arm in the air that you're really interested in their company, and we'll make sure that they see this in the recruiter product. Lastly, when students are viewing jobs uh, or companies, you will often see right similar companies, and those are not terribly surprising when you're on a company page, right? If you're following Nike and interested in them, you're going to see comparable companies, right? Under Armour, et cetera. But when you look at a job at a job specific level, oftentimes you can get some unusual suspects that they might want to consider, okay? That aren't necessarily usually in their target, target employer list, all right? Or the list you've worked out with them. So let me show you a little bit of these things, okay? So the first thing is setting up those custom job alerts. And the best way to do that is come up to the top, top here and click jo the jobs briefcase icon and just start a search. So we were in the pop quiz thinking about jobs that are in the U.S. posted in the past week, a filter we can quickly apply, right? Good news, 1.5 million jobs in the past week. By the way, we can filter down if we only want to see internship or entry level, for example, and that's cutting it down to about a third. <laughs> and then if we select over here, uh, all filters, we can see some of the other filters that are available. So for example, we want to see only remote jobs in this example, right? Um, we apply that filter. We've got 41,000 jobs over here that meet those criteria. All we've got to do is set up this job alert is toggle that on. We will get these, the new jobs, not just the ones open, you know, not the 41,000, but the new jobs that meet these criteria in our inbox every morning. You can trust that LinkedIn knows all the jobs that are out there. It is scraping job boards. It has acquired job boards. Many jobs are first or only posted on LinkedIn because they know that's where the job seekers are. And so they paid a list there. So when you set up these job alerts, you can feel pretty comfortable. It's getting everything that's out there. And also remind your students that they need to connect an email address they actually check to LinkedIn. Why? Because they want to get these job alerts. They want to know what things are becoming available when. And lastly, they want to be getting those recruiter inbounds, right? So you could do dozens of these. It's all about what they can manage. Um, you could also do something very generic that just says, I want to know every job that's coming available in Los Angeles for uh, Uber, because that's where I know I really want to work regardless of role, right? And you're keeping tabs on that. So set up those custom job alerts. It's really important. As I said, in your settings, when you set them up for a specific company, you can signal to recruiters that you've done that, which is um, like raising your hand really high up in the air saying, pick me, pick me. And then the last thing that I wanted to show you <clears throat> on this topic is, um, is making sure that we view jobs at a job specific level. So uh, if we go back to our job search and we <clears throat> look for a specific job, oh, you can see the ones I've set up, that's embarrassing. Um, okay, let's look for CEO jobs in, in Virginia. Uh, actually, that might not be the best example. Let's look for associate product manager in, um, any of these companies. Okay, so let's click on one of these. Let's say we're gonna click on principal product manager for internal comms at Amazon. And this job is hyperlinked here. <clears throat> when you click on it and fly out more information about the specific job, of course, you'll see that you wanna land on their company page, make sure students are doing their research. But when you scroll down, you will actually, you can set an alert here for similar jobs. But when you scroll all the way down at the job specific level, you will see not just about the company, but similar jobs at maybe companies you hadn't have considered, right? Um, here's one for Esri, here's one for Splunk, Qualtrics, Couchbase, right? And some other unusual suspects. This is based on what kinds of views people are uh, viewing if they're viewing this Amazon job and other similar um, companies, right? It's all about data. It's all about clicks. And that's what LinkedIn knows. Um, and as you can see, a lot of this is based on location, but make sure you're telling students to scroll all the way down on these job alert pages.
uh, on these job descriptions, okay? All right, so that's our demo there. Here's the poll that I briefly brought up that we will go back to now. What percentage of hiring managers would rather see a candidate video than a cover letter? And by the way, I know I'm going really fast. The whole idea here was to hit you with a, um, with a broad uh, sort of like broad brush and get you 10 steps ahead. All right, I'm not sure why that poll is not working. Let's try that again. Hmm. Okay, well, anyway, the, um, and the NACE folks, if you, you just come off mute, if I'm doing something wrong here, just let me know because I'm not able to check the chat. The percentage of hiring managers that would rather see a candidate video than a cover letter is... Oh, there it goes. It was it was slow. <laughs> um, uh, you guys are right. It is indeed thirty nine. Uh, sorry, sixty one percent. Okay, um, and of course this makes sense. Why would why would recruiters and hiring managers spend thirty minutes interviewing you when they can just get a quick sense of who you are or read a cover letter? Uh, they can get a quick sense of who you are with a video. In the LinkedIn app now, you can add a cover story. Okay. And you just do this by tapping your profile. Um, the advice that I would give is make sure your students have worked with you closely to craft their elevator pitch. Make sure it's pointed to the thing they want to be found for and considered for next, not just what they have done. Make sure that's nice and tight, well articulated, good volume, et cetera, before they do this, because you know you can do more harm than good if you don't have that totally tight. All right. So Many people are saying, hey, maybe this is kind of the new cover letter. <laughs> it's a feature that's available, again, only in mobile and only do it if and when your students are really ready with that elevator pitch, uh, aspirational elevator pitch. One other thing I want to make you available and make you aware of that can help with this sort of telling your story um, on LinkedIn is LinkedIn creator mode. This is going to make the default action to follow you as opposed to connect with you when people are viewing your profile. But that's not really what's important, right? What matters is that you can actually identify up to five hashtags that you know about, that you quote unquote talk about. And this is just a great additional way to personally brand yourself because it goes right up there below your headline to say, hey, yeah, I know about software as a service. I know about social media. I know about retail best practices, right? Why not say that if you want to be in that, in that industry and or are studying some of those things, for example? Okay, so good personal branding. And then, of course, there's LinkedIn Live, too, which uh, who cares about? All right. Let's move into our last hack. And please do not drop because we're going to give you some awesome goodies at the end of this, um, which is about video interviewing. What percentage of employers plan to move to video interviews permanently? We all know what's happened with COVID. Three, two, one. And uh, most of you said 38%. I will admit, I think y'all are right. I think that uh, this data is a little bit old and I think we're probably already up to close to 38% or more. But as of a few months ago, it was about a quarter of employers that said, hey, we're doing this permanently. There's new efficiencies to be gained. It makes a lot more sense, right? And, um, and so they are here to stay. Um, and LinkedIn can help us with some of our video interview prep. Here's um, some general best practices that I just want to point out from my perspective as an interviewer, which is, you know, look, we know the reality. 50% of interviewers make up their mind in the first five minutes, like it or not. 33% make up their minds in the first 90 seconds, right? Um, and so that's even more the case with virtual interviews, right? If they're here to stay, we all know what's happening. People multitask. I'm sure none of you are doing that right now, but it happens, okay? And so... There's two really critical things that um, interviewees need to communicate when they are doing the virtual interviews and all these different kinds of questions. By the way, we do a whole chapter on this in the book, um, but it's all about two things, demonstrating warmth, right? You're on a stage. Um, again, people are multitasking. You've got to come through that screen. I'm like screaming right now and I'm going to lose my voice because I'm really trying to demonstrate that warmth, right? We want to make a human connection, even though there's a screen between us. People want to hire people that they want to be around and work with and, and you know, who are nice, even if they're not uh, able to be there in person. That's on the interviewer, interviewee rather, to demonstrate. And then secondly, competence, a pointed story that builds up to the thing that you are interviewing for. 
rather than some arbitrary structure like chronological, for example, right? Uh, thinking about how you're weaving that story together. So warmth and competence are the two things that are most important in this video interviewing environment. Now, LinkedIn also has some tools that can help. There is AI powered interview practice that's available on LinkedIn. And one other thing that I wanna show you in the interview prep section. So this jobs tab is largely buried and people don't really um, use it enough. But if you click that jobs tab again, over here, you can see interview prep on the left rail. And if you click interview prep, you can actually identify the most common questions that LinkedIn has crowdsourced to get this information for different types of roles, right? Entry-level sales role. You better be prepared to answer these 20 questions. Similarly for um, you know, a marketing manager role and so on, okay? Then over here, you can actually practice your answers to these and get feedback from the algorithm. You know, how did you do on things like delivery, um, you know, pacing, et cetera. You can even request feedback from your network, from people you select to say, hey, how do you think I answered this question? How could I make it better? Here's a super advanced hack. Reach out to the people who you've recently connected with or you want to be a mentor or referral and ask, hey, would this answer resonate with your interview process? You could do the same thing with your cover story that you've uploaded once you do that in the mobile app. All right, so last pop quiz. <laughs> Will you buy the book? Don't worry, this is anonymous. I'm just doing this to be cheeky. Oh, a lot of people are, are not sure. That's okay. I asked for honesty. And over half of you said yes, or almost half of you said yes. Thank you, I really appreciate it. Let me give you the last few links and goodies here. Um, and obviously there's two right answers. Yes, or already did. Um, our seven hacks that we went through today, Career Explorer to take a skill-based approach to getting in the door, as well as that alumni tool to reach out to people who are actually in those jobs and we have a shared affiliation with. Finding anyone, anyone with LinkedIn, advanced people search, then using things like who viewed my profile, roulette, hunter.io um, to actually make those connections. Skill assessments to show, not just tell that we have skills that are market differentiating. Economic graph to know where there's pockets of activity and um, what kinds of jobs and skills are being hired for, future of work, new job search tools, job alerts, viewing jobs at a company, at a job specific level, that cover story, video interview prep with AI and with those common questions. <clears throat> All right. So I wanted to thank you for being a part of this today and for uh, <clears throat> allowing me to share with you these seven advanced hacks and our book, which we're just so excited about. Again, we wanna make sure you have this link to get half off the book, um, as well as a free course for all of your students. Schools pay us $1,000 for this and we're giving this away for free if you um, buy 25 or more copies of the book. Um, if you need to reach us, here's our information um, for more questions. And by the way, when you buy 25 or more copies at this discounted rate, um, you can just email us the proof of that at info at linkedinguys.com. And we'll send you a link that you can immediately get out to all your students, alumni, staff, whoever you'd like on the back end of that right away. Okay. So I know we're coming up on time here. And I'll turn it back over to the NACE folks while I try to answer a few of the questions that I did not get to in our last couple of minutes here. Thank you so much. And I wanna thank everyone here. Thank you, Jer um, Omar, for a very informative session. And thank you everyone who participated and attended today's webinar. This will conclude the webinar and hope everyone has a NACE day. <laughs>